What is up, YouTube? Welcome to Pain Fro Games. In today's video, we're breaking down the leaked Pokedex for all the returning Pokemon for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. But this time around, we're going to be doing it a little bit differently. We're going to be talking about the competitive viability of the Pokemon coming back. And I broke it down in the tier list. And if you are new to the channel, please subscribe, like the video. I really appreciate it. If you haven't seen it before, the Pokedex of all returning Pokemon was leaked by Riddler Koo, and Riddler Koo said this was about like 95% correct, and there is 293 Pokemon listed here. Of course, these Pokemon are represented by the final form in their current lines. This does not include necessarily if the Pokemon is going to have an evolution. We do know from leaks that Dunsparce is going to have an evolution, but Dunsparce is still listed here as an example. We also know that Pokemon forms are coming back to the game as well. So we know about Hisuian forms, Galar forms, Alolan forms. We don't know which ones are coming. However, forms do not have a new dex entry, so they are not listed as separate Pokemon. So this is still going to be 293 Pokemon. And the bottom line here is all Pokemon home Pokemon. So it probably won't be available at launch. They'll probably be available later, probably like January or February of 2023. Now, I saw a lot of comments of people not happy with the supposed dex cut here. There's always going to be a dex cut for Pokemon games. They're never going to include every single Pokemon in a Pokemon game in the future. In all reality, it's just something we're going to have to accept. And honestly, I'm fine with it. I'm fine with having a certain amount of Pokemon per region. It gives a region an identity, and I think it does a lot for world building. Now, the big thing when I saw this list of Pokemon, I was like, okay, there's a lot of really good Pokemon. There's a lot of really bad Pokemon. There's also a lot of Pokemon that actually don't evolve that many times either. So I thought it was a very interesting regional decks that we're going to have for Scarlet and Violet. And I'm a big competitive player myself. You know, I do love shiny hunting. I think a lot of people have seen me shiny hunt from live streams. However, competitive play is what got me into Pokemon really hardcore in the first place. And I got to say, I'm looking forward to playing VGC and Pokemon Showdown singles for Scarlet and Violet. So I wanted to break down this list of Pokemon and see if we can sort of figure out some sort of basic meta. Of course, that's going to change once we actually see all the brand new Pokemon coming to the game because there is a lot of brand new Pokemon. We know that there's going to be 103 brand new Pokemon plus four forms. So, of course, we're not going to have a true idea of the meta, but we can at least see what Pokemon are probably going to be really strong from this current list of Pokemon listed here. Now, for the tier list here, I want to say that I did not include any of the Pokemon Home Pokemon because we know that Pokemon Home is not going to be day one probably going to be journey in february 2023 so i think it's not going to be worth entertaining this because it's not going to be a day one meta but i do think a lot of these pokemon are going to be really strong and worth talking about when we get closer to that period so i rated this tier list from s to d and i want to say we're talking about this purely from a competitive point of view for either pokemon singles on pokemon showdown or vgc for the actual competitive play and of course, guys, there's gonna be some of your favorite Pokemon. I'm gonna dumpster in here. I'm sorry, but I'm just gonna be looking at this from a completely analytical point of view of stats as numbers. Now, starting with D tier, we can see a couple of interesting Pokemon. So I wanna bring out Dunsparce, Primeape, and Girafferidge. All these Pokemon have new evolutions for Scarlet and Violet. However, because we don't know about these evolutions, well, we do know about Ferrigraph, and I have a feeling that Ferrigraph will be good, but because they are new Pokemon, they do not get included on this list, which is why they're pre-evolutions listed in the D tier. Now, the Pokemon listed in D tier are historically bad Pokemon, considering VGC and Smog on play. Of course, you know, sometimes they'll have a gen where they're good, but usually, based on their abilities, their stat spread, you know, stats not being over base 100 either, or just terrible move pulls, these Pokemon usually are going to be in the lower tiers. Now, the Pokemon in C tier actually serve some sort of niche, and they could be really good potentially, but at the very least, they can sort of fit a certain team role, and they can perform that role adequately enough where you can see yourself winning games. The trio is very interesting because this Pokemon is absolute trash. However, it can trap a Pokemon in and get a guaranteed kill, and after that, it's probably going to die, so it makes it very interesting. Alolan Raichu really sticks out to me because if you do have electric train up, this Pokemon is going to be the fastest thing on the field and do quite a bit of damage with an electric attack. So it is very niche in that regard. 
Ursa Rain is pretty niche. However, it does have Ursa Luna, which is going to be a very OP Pokemon the moment it is allowed to come into Scarlet and Violet. But right now, Ursa Rain does have a move set with Toxic Orb and Facade. So it's going to be very strong when we get there. Metacham with Pure Power is very good. Star Raptor is an incredibly strong, fast Pokemon. Just really frail, and it does get outclassed by a couple of other Pokemon doing very similar roles. Obama Snow comes in with the only hail setter for Scarlet and Violet, so it does have a natural use. There is a couple of sun Pokemon as well, like Lilligant being here, Sazbuck, that can be used in the sun, but I think sun is not going to be too strong overall. Same with Leafeon is going to be pretty decent here. We see something like Elisapod, which is a really strong Pokemon that is being held back by its ability. Now, B tier is full of all great Pokemon. All these Pokemon are going to be very viable and usable. And you can actually make a complete team of B tiers and be really good. Sylveon is going to be really good, of course. Fairy is going to be the best type still. Indeed, he's going to be a VGC monster. Breloom is going to be the best Spore user in all of Scarlet and Violet, so I can't wait to use this guy. Also, Technician Breloom is legendary. Gengar may actually move back up to A tier. It doesn't have Levitate anymore, but it's still a phenomenal fast Pokemon, and Poison is really good because Fairy is the best type. Toxtricity, very interesting. The fact that Terrestrialize is a thing we have to consider. We can make it a normal type, and the fact that it has an ability that increases the damage of sound-based moves, so make it a normal type use Hyper Voice, and Profit. So this is going to be a very gimmicky Pokemon, but the damage is going to be incredible. Florges we actually haven't seen since Gen 6, and I'm very excited to bring back this special defensive uh, fairy Pokemon. So I think it's going to be really solid in this meta overall. Pelipper is back, and of course, that means rain teams, and rain is going to be the best weather again. So of course, Pelipper, not the best Pokemon itself, but the fact that the rain is here means it's a Pokemon we got to really care about. Seeing with Torkoal, you know, sun may not be the best weather, but it's still this like pretty much the second or third best depending on the meta. So Torkoal is going to be very viable. Sableye is going to be incredible for VGC play. Same with Bronzong for Trick Room team. Setting up Trick Room is going to be really good. And then we got a lot of good revenge killers like Crocodile. Haxor is going to be great for setting up too. Zoroark is a phenomenal revenge killer. Halucha, really fast, really great typing Pokemon. Colossal could be really good, especially if Terrestrialize to remove its poor typing and then get the Steam Engine boost for the plus three speed. So definitely watch out for that. Needle King is sort of a really fast sheer force user. Gastrodon, Hippowdon are absolute tanks. And A tier, all these Pokemon are absolutely godlike. Currently, amazing Pokemon. You cannot go wrong with these potential S tiers here, depending how things shake out. So, Barrascuta, an absolute physical water monster, has a phenomenal ability with Propeller Tail. So, it pretty much dodges Storm Drain and any redirection moves. So, definitely watch out for this. Dragonite with multi scale is always a beast. One Dragon Dance, and this thing is ready to pop off. The only issue with Dragonite is you need to have that multi scale up, or you need that one Dragon Dance, and you can be hitting. So if you can get that one Dragon Dance, you're good to go. Sort of same with Gyarados. You need another one Dragon Dance, or you'll die from a Thunderbolt, and that will really suck. But you have really great stats, and of course, Terrestrialize will make both of these Pokemon fantastic because you have a four time weakness you can remove it and now you have one weakness so i really think gyarados going to terrestrialize something to a ground type to be immune to electric will be phenomenal and then you get stab earthquake is going to be absolute beast like tentacruel should be good because fairy types are still good water poison is phenomenal hard walls certain pokemon like azumarill which is actually also listed in a tier Magnezone is the ultimate steel type trapping pokemon and this thing is still going to be great at taking out scissors Rotom in all its forms, especially Rotom Wash, going to be a beast. I would put, honestly, Rotom Wash in S tier, but rating Rotom, all of them together, probably in the A tier, right? Gudra, definitely A tier. I would put the Hisuian version, which is Dragon and Steel. It actually has a better stat spread and a better typing up in the S tier, personally. But Gudra is still going to be a great Pokemon. Very great at being a special defensive wall with a good special attack. Corviknight, absolute beast of typing steel flying is phenomenal has a great ability to and actually has really good defenses overall it's better skarmory in my opinion so i think this thing is going to be seen around the meta still hatterene is going to be our trick room monster of a pokemon once trick room goes up this thing is going to be blasting things left and right great for vgc 
Azumarill is going to be really good for singles, especially if we can get off that uh, huge power belly drum aqua jet stuff going off. Lucario, I think, is still going to be a great Pokemon. Could potentially go down to B tier just because it does have a lot of weaknesses, but is a very strong and fast Pokemon, both good on the offensive side for physical and special attackers. Quagsire, you know, I think this Mud Boy is honestly the best Mud Boy in the game. Only has one weakness to Grass, and Terra is going to make that really good. Really good at beating Kyogre, so, you know, this thing is a legendary killer. And Bisharp actually has phenomenal typing as well. Once again, you can remove that four times weakness with a Terra Crystal. So maybe go to a Ghost type, and then you're immune to fighting now. Has a phenomenal ability with a Fiant, and has a really good stats across the board. And now for our S tier, and these are definitely, in my opinion, the best Pokemon that are returning to Scarlet and Violet. They all have been really good in past Pokemon games and past metas, either in singles or in doubles. So Arcanine is bootleg Incineroar because there is no Incineroar. Arcanine is Arcanine, absolute beast. Burn support, lowering special attack with Snarl, Intimidate 2, really great stats, 555 across the board. Absolute monster of a Pokemon. Slowbro is a beast in singles. We got healing ourselves with Slack Off. We can also have Oblivious so no one can set up on us. We have Scald for burn support, Psyshock to hit that defensive side. Very good Pokemon overall. Amoongus, so I made an error about saying Breloom was the only Spore Pokemon. Amoongus has Spore too, but it is much slower. However, it does have Regenerator, so we're going to be able to switch out, get that HP back, and it's going to be fantastic. Also, you got that Poison-type damage too to hit those fairies super effectively, so Amoongus is going to be a Pokemon to watch out on the defensive side. Toxapex is just a much better Tentacruel. This thing is an absolute beast. It's going to be really hard to kill this thing, so definitely watch out. I think Dragapult is going to be the best pseudo-legendary out of all of these. I mean, especially in VGC, we saw Dragapult and Colossal combo being absolute championship winning stuff, so prepare for that combo to happen again. Volcarona, Quiver Dance. That's all you need. Quiver Dance and Fire Type, you know, that's it. That's all you need, honestly, at the end of the day. And Mimikyu, Fairy Ghost, phenomenal typing, incredible ability being able to take one free move and setting up a Swords Dance, and then you got Swords Dance, Shadow Snake, or if you outspeed, you just hit a Swords Dance and play rough. So this Pokemon is going to be a beast. And honestly, Mimikyu, definitely one of my favorite personal Pokemon of all time, too. So there is my tier list for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. All the returning Pokemon coming to the game. Definitely let me know in the comment section below if you disagree or agree with my list. Or what Pokemon do you think is going to be really incredible that I didn't mention. Well, guys, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and like the video. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out and have a great one. <laughs>